All right, guys, we are here to go over the Rising Dragon Carnival banner. This is the double rates banner that's currently available on the global side of Dokkan Battle. Now, if you guys aren't aware of it, let's see. The banner is double rates banner, which means 20% pull rate on SSRs. It features all four LR units and its 15 dragon stones. Taking that into consideration with nothing else, this is a phenomenal banner. If you don't have any of these cards, it's even better. I want to just pre-state that before making the next statement. I don't think you should pull on it until we know what the next Dokkan Fest is. Yes, there is the highest probability that the next Dokkan Fest is Gogeta and Janemba. We do not know that for a fact. It's all speculation, though the probability is extremely high. It's still just probability. So, with that being said, guys, hold off on it. It's available for exactly one more week. Uh, I would wait until next week when we find out when the actual Dokkan Fest is. Plus, on top of that, if it is Gogeta and Janemba, Janemba, that means we should be getting the discount Dragon Stones. So it's worth waiting for it so that way you can get those discount Dragon Stones so that way you can summon on it for lower prices. That's my, that's my stance on this without going over the banner. If you don't have the cards, if you like the cards that are there and you want them, there are a couple of actually good units on here. Um, and if you want to wait, if you are, if you actually don't plan on pulling on Gogeta Janemba because you're waiting for a category lead to come out, then this banner is definitely for you. Also, if the Gogeta Janemba doesn't come out next month, it may be worth pulling one or two times on it. Uh, with that being said, outside of that, I don't recommend it. That's just the, the end of my day. Maybe one or two multi-summons at most, uh, but that's just it. Save your stones for Gogeta and Janemba because those are going to be the two most hyped banners for a long time. All right, now with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the in-depth stuff about this. All right, first off, the four LRs that are here, Goku, Black Majin, Vegeta, Super Saiyan, Gohan, and Broly. Yes, all of them are here, guys, so they have a 0 .07 on average percent pull rate, which means they have an abysmally small pull rate. Don't go into this banner thinking you're going to get lucky with one of the LRs. If you happen to get one, I'm very happy for you, good for you. Let everyone know, because <laughs> it is it's abysmal rates. Don't go hunting, that's all I'm going to say. Going hunting for LRs is never a good idea. You're going to have a bad time. <laughs> uh, anyway, with that being said, guys, they are available, so you could, you do have that chance, which makes it a little bit more enticing. Uh, outside of that, these are the nine featured units. Bardock, Bardock, Vegeta, Fasha, Trunks, Gohan, uh, Zamasu, Frieza, Bardock. A whole bunch of Bardocks in there. <laughs> We're going to go over and talk about these guys. We're going to talk about a little bit, not too in-depth, but at least their viability on teams and them those themselves as cards as a whole so let's go ahead and do that we're gonna talk about them in an order of the worst to the best so let's go ahead and jump into it now the first one in the worst one in my opinion is going to be this future gohan now he does have the kaioken effect on his super attack i don't like it myself but it essentially means his attack constantly goes up a 120 team i'm sure he can start hitting really hard Especially on the longer events, you'll probably start hitting very hard. I don't know if he's going to clear a million. He Doken Awakens, he doesn't have Fierce Battle, which holds him back as well. You want Fierce Battle on a Mono Technique team, especially a Mono Hero Technique team. That's definitely really good. He does have Experienced Fighters, Super Saiyan, Golden War, Kamehameha, uh, Prepared for Battle. If you have the um, actual uh, Merge Zamasu card and or the Zamasu Rose card, he does have Dismal Future. I believe those two cards actually have it in them. Uh, yes, they do. So that will give you an additional one key and Shattering Limit, which some cards do have. Uh, so he does have some decent, you know, link skills. He do, he, he just held out back because he doesn't have all of the good attack buffs. The the, mo the best one, notably, is going to be Super Saiyan. Outside of that, not so much. Though his passive skill attack and defense plus 70% is cool. The biggest thing that holds him back is extreme damage to the enemy only on Doken Awakening. If you cannot get him Doken Awakened, it's huge damage to the enemy. No one wants that. No one wants that. So overall, worst card in the pool. My opinion on it. Obviously, it's just an opinion. I'm not saying anything about future Gohan. Just want to state that too. I'm not saying anything about him as a as a person or a person. Uh, him as a character. Him as a card. He is horrible. Worst unit in the game. Well, not in the game. In the in the gotcha. In my opinion. Next one, Golden Frieza. Does he have viability? Yes, his Doken Awakening doesn't really matter too much because he's literally just used for one thing. 
His passive skill of damage received re re well, damage reduction. Damage reduction of 90% when HP of 60% or above. When he token awakens, when he's not token awakened, it's when 80% is HP of 60% or above. Personally, everyone feels the same way about it. It should have been reduced HP, like when HP is like 40% or 30% or above. Would have been a lot more viable, but they did 90%. He is meant for tanking. He's not a great unit. You're almost never going to run him. The only time I could ever see you actually running him is probably doing Dokkan Battlefield, or not Dokkan Battlefield. Well, yes, Dokkan Battlefield. But the uh, new event that's out on the JP side, uh, Dokkan Battle Road, uh, that's probably about it. His leader ability, which is the nuking leader, uh, antiquated. Unless you're just trying to have fun, I could definitely see you nuking the old events just to see what numbers you can get on the old, the old events. But uh, outside of that, he's not a great unit. He has a very old school link skill set. Uh, Super God Combat, Prodigies, and Fierce Battle are the three most notable of what you could probably use. I can see Revival as well if you throw him on a Revival team in the future when it becomes available. But for the most part, he is a low tier unit. No one really runs him anymore, especially on like a villain's team if your tech one overrides him. Uh, if you don't have any and you're looking for damage reduction, he couldn't be a go-to for you, but out of everyone, he is the second lowest. The next one we're going to talk about is this Vegeta. Uh, now, this Vegeta is a decent unit. He's not the best. He does supreme damage before Doken Awakening. His leader skill is meh, but his passive skill is cool. Attack and defense plus 60% when facing only one enemy. He just needs to be on the field. He just needs to face one enemy. It helps him tank a little bit more. His defensive stat is... Uh, kind of low uh 4200 i mean it's not really that low he does have higher defense because he is a vegeta card vegeta cards typically do have that uh, when you factor in the defense of 60 percent for dokkan events or any event when there's only one blossom just majority of the time that defense is going to go up about uh about probably about two three thousand two to three thousand about so i let's just call it an uh, even uh six and a half so that plus a 120 lead it's a little bit better. When he Dokken Awakens, he's going to Dokken Awaken to a higher percentage, I believe it's 70%. So he's going to be a lot more viable. He will tank a lot better. His uh, stats are going to go up to 4,300 for defense. So he doesn't get that much. He gets about 150 uh, defense increase. His leader ability is still meh. Now, if he is the first attacker in the turn, which is something you might want to consider doing because he does give everyone attack plus 20%, he will uh, be able to tank a little bit better with a 70% of defense buff uh, on top of the 120 lead if you're running him on a Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku. Uh, the thing that stinks is he doesn't really have anyone that he links that well with on a tech on that team, uh, just because Warrior Gods, the 10% uh, link, really is only going with the, the uh, technique Goku, and he's very antiquated card, you're not going to really run him that much. Uh, he's not good, that's all there is to it, he's not good on a mono tech. So that's not going to come into play. You do have Prodigies, but again, Prodigies isn't going to come into play. Royal Lineage probably won't come into play. So his Link skill set for a Monotech team is not going to be that great. That's why you're not going to really run it too often. Uh, and that's why I ranked him lower on this list. But oh, as a unit, he is solid. You can create teams for him. He's just one of those units that's like a mess subunit. You, you put him in if your second rate units aren't there. Just because in terms of linking abilities, he doesn't have as many as he possibly could. Though he does have things like Super Saiyan, um, Super Saiyan, Saiyan Warrior Race, uh, and that's about or prepared for battle. So, you know, again, B tier, sub tier, I wouldn't recommend him as your primary subunit, but he can be utilized. Next one is going to be this Fasha. Fasha, horrible unit, don't like her. Great ape transformations, they stink. They're only good and they come in clutch every once in a while. Why would I consider her a decent unit and above these guys? Well, honestly, if you don't have Super Saiyan 3 uh, Goku for the Super Saiyan 4 Goku team, she's going to be your next best bet. Why is that? Saiyan Roar. She has Saiyan Roar. That's awesome. You know, there's really nothing else you can do about that. She has Saiyan Roar that makes her very viable for Super Saiyan 4 team. You know, you're going to want to make sure that Super Saiyan 4 Goku hits for his hardest. He's an extremely hard-hitting unit. You want to get him so his pan when his passive goes off, that he gets that much more attack. A 25% attack buff? Phenomenal. Plus, on top of that, she changes Intelligence Key Spheres to Strength Key Spheres, which is really good for A, the World Tournament, and B, for any type of LR you're running. If you're running an LR Broly team, and you have Super Saiyan 4 Goku without the Super Saiyan 3 Goku, she's a great substitution, and if Broly comes up off rotation, because you can't have the two of them linked together, right next to each other, she's going to be changing Key Orbs for him. So, overall, she's a decent unit, she's an Orb Changer, and she's good for Super Saiyan 4 Goku. She just doesn't really do anything with her passive skill. Attack and Defense plus 30% with a chance to turn into a Giant 8. If it was attack and defense plus 30% for all allies, that would definitely put her over the top and she would be top tier, but she doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, cool for a great ape team, but outside of that, uh, she would be a good subunit for your Super Saiyan 3 Goku if you don't have her for a Super Saiyan 4 Goku team. She's also good for the World Tournament if you're looking for World Tournament building because she is an orb chain. 
Next one is going to be this Bardock. Now, this Bardock is a decent unit. He is It's the uh, Great Ape version of him as well. Uh, supreme damage on a super attack before he Doken Awakens. Uh, his passive skill attack plus 70% when HP is 30% or above, which isn't that bad because HP 30% or above almost all the time. Almost all the time. So it's always going to give him a nice buff. He has some alright Link skills. Uh, Saiyan Warrior Race, Team, uh, well, Saiyan Pride, Transform, Saiyan Warrior. So in terms of a monotech team, he's all, these are almost never going to go off. Saiyan Warrior is probably the most uh, viable one. Possibly Saiyan Pride, depending on who's running on that team. I mean, in terms of a tech team, if something ever wants to load, he can link with himself for Saiyan Pride, which is cool. Um, the old school Majin Vegeta, if you have him for an AoE, if you want to run him on that. Uh, outside of that, I mean, free to play Kappa, I guess, for a monotech. Uh, in terms of an actual hero team, there are a lot more choices for you with that with with him overall as a unit. But when he Doken Awake, this is really what we talk about now. Greatly raises attack for one turn, so he's giving himself a really nice attack on a super attack. On top of that. His passive skill, attack plus 100% when HP is 30% or above. So he's greatly raising his attack, and he's giving himself an additional 100% attack buff. I believe that greatly raises attack for one turn. It goes can be can be up to 50%. I don't know specifically what it is though. So if you know the exact numbers, let me know down in the comments below. Go on, let everyone in the community know because uh, you know that's what this video, these videos aren't just here for me to talk at you. It's for us to communicate. So the things that I miss or that I'm not sure of, if you are aware, make sure you let the community know by you know, letting me letting us know down in the comments. Uh, so outside of that, he gained Shattering the Limit, which is decent, but he keeps all the other Link skills. Link skills, again, are subpar, but because his passive skill and his super are there, he will be a good damage dealer on that team. So he's a higher he's higher on the list as a, one of the higher sub-units you can sub in for damage dealers. Uh, on top of that, because he does link with the Super Saiyan technique Bardock, uh, you're going to get some nice uh, nice uh, collaboration between the two of them if you don't have LR Goku, because they, they, you can keep them together. He'll be doing the damage dealing, and then the other Bardock will be doing sealing to help prevent a lot of damage output from the enemy, or damage taken from the enemy, because they can't super. Next one is going to be this Zamasu, which actually probably should have come before that Bardock, honestly. I think I mixed up the tabs there, uh, but still, supreme damage to the enemy. His passive skill, attack plus 50% and recover, 7% when HP is 80% or below. Definitely not bad. Thing that stinks is his link skills are horrible. They're oh, they're essentially atrocious. Uh, Godly power is decent. Prodigy is decent, um, and that's about it. So when he Doken awakens, he does gain fierce battle, which gives him a little bit of a buff, and he gets fear and faith, which also gives him a little bit of a buff for a mono villains team. The thing is, he is specifically good on a on a Zamasu in, uh, on a Zamasu team himself, because Rose is technically Zamasu. So uh, that's all he's really good for. He's good for that, that villains team, because you're going to run like Rose lead, um, or a Merzimasu lead, and then you're going to have him, you're going to have the uh, the LR version, the TUR version of that LR, uh, you're going to have him, you're going to have base form Goku Black, that's really the best time that you're going to run him, because they all link very well together, his attack buffs are very minimal, Prodigies, Godly Power, and Fierce Battle, there's not a lot with Godly Power, there's a decent amount with Prodigies, Fierce Battle everyone has, so that definitely is his saving grace, especially Fear and Faith for a villain's team. His passive when he Doken Awakens is a little bit better. Attack plus 60%, which is definitely cool. He's not going to be your hardest hitter, but he will be more viable because he does that. But recover 10% HP when HP is 80% or below. Just for being there on the field definitely helps you out. 80% or below is definitely one of those good passives that's going to benefit you. Um, and another thing is, the only thing that stinks about that is technically is if like you're at like 75% and you have big bad bosses active when he comes on the field, he like he doesn't have it obviously, but if he's on the field when that goes off and his passive goes off, it's going to kill big bad bosses Link. So it's like one of those meh uh, situations where it's kind of like damn if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, he does supreme damage and greatly lowers the enemy defense, so that's decent as well. Um, overall, a decent unit, him and this Bardock, because of his ability to regenerate health, kind of makes them together. I would still probably put this Bardock over the Zamasu, but you know it really depends on what you're running and who you have on your team. But they're decent units. I would definitely recommend them as subunits if you don't have them. I mean, if Janemba comes out, this is when you're going to really start considering him for a model strength team. On a villains team, you're only going to consider him if you don't have Rose and Merge Zamasu. Like, if you have Rose or Merge Zamasu, but you don't have anyone else to link with them, that's when he's going to be your, your choice, a subunit, essentially. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Mai. Mai, what is she? I don't know. Uh, I kept her above them just because of her ability to stun. She stuns on her uh, super attack, she stuns on her passive, which makes her very viable uh, to make sure the enemy doesn't attack. 
I know stunning teams aren't done as often, but they're still very viable. The enemy can't attack you if they're stunned. Some Dokkan events, they can't, they, that, it's not effective, but it is there. You can utilize it. It makes it cool. It makes it cool to run. That's why Keeper there, the, each of these guys have their own little unique thing that they do. You know, in terms of, okay, this is, uh, this one's damage output. This is HP recovery. This is stunning. These are the, th these, these three right here are the mid tier ones that are on this, ba on this banner. Um, outside of that, I don't know if there's anything really viable about them. I wouldn't run, run them as primary units. They're always going to be subunits. Especially Mai. Mai will be a good subunit because she'll make sure the Mono Heroes team that, is all, that your enemy is stunned as long as they can be stunned. Whew. All right, she doesn't Doken Awaken. So the next one is we're moving into our top tier, the top three tiers right here. We have the, the actual Bardock, physical Bardock. Cool thing about him, the SR Bardock, the, the Super Saiyan Bardock, the agility one can be Z Awaken, fed into him for a 50% chance. Leader ability is kind of all right. Um, not great for, you know, a t for his SSR bearing. He is old school though, extreme damage. As you can tell, he is old school extreme damage with a with an SSR. His passive skill keep plus two for all allies when HP is 50% or above. We're not gonna talk about his link skills because we're gonna talk about his Doken Awakening. He Doken Awakens when you get the medals a lot better. All types keep plus two, HP attack and defense plus 20%. So he's a mini rainbow leader. If you don't have anyone, if you don't have Messi and Bardock, if you don't have Khalifla, She's going to be, uh, he's going to be good. Uh, max stats are pretty decent, not, not great, not horrible. He uh, gets the upgrade to supreme damage, and he seals super attacks. He is a sealer. His passive skill really helps him out a lot. He plus two, attack plus 20% for all allies, when HP is 30% or above. So his passive skill makes him a very viable support unit for a monophysical team. Uh, I would recommend running him. Honestly, that's all that there is to it because of that. I mean, there's going to be better support units in the future. As of right now, I mean, you, you, we, do, we do actually have the support units right now, I believe, because uh, the, the boo, I remember, yeah, because I got the boo for the extreme physical, but he's still a good support unit. He seals, he gives key buffs, he gives attack buffs to enemies, I mean, to all allies. Uh, he has Super Saiyan, he has Saiyan Pride, he has Prepared for Battle, and Fierce Battle. So that's awesome. And he has the First Awaken, which I know is not a, a very common link, but it is there. So you can utilize that. First Awaken, he shares with like, the Piccolo has it, which is really great for defense. Um, and if you're running a Heroes team, there the, all these units can get that additional 25%. So that's, that's pretty phenomenal. So overall, he's good. He shares some good link skills, he has a decent passive skill, and he has a good super attack. He's going to be one of those units where it's like, depending on the situation, he's going to be your A tier. If he's not going to be an EV, if you don't need him on your team, you won't run him. But when you need him, he's going to be a primary pick. Let me put it like that. Uh, the next one of the next two. Uh, all right, they're loading because you know my Google Chrome can't handle loading multiple tabs anymore because RAM and things. <laughs> uh, the next best unit is going to be this Trunks. I'm not going to go over everything with him, but Galakon Supreme Damage is passive, is attack and defense plus 20% for all allies. He has some really good link skills. When he Doken Awakens, he Doken Awakens with his uh, super attack is same thing supreme damage buck is all allies attack plus 20 percent for one turn you don't want him to be your primary unit though because he is a support unit attack and defense plus 25 percent for all allies he trumps this uh actual bardock because he gives an additional five percent buff but he doesn't give any key so take it for what you will you need to take a look at your team to see if they give off key or not he has golden warrior which is really good super saiyan which is good uh dismal future depends uh, not so much prepare for battle is definitely good so uh, so key, that's all he really has. Super Saiyan and key. That's it. Um, but his, his passive is really what you're going to be utilizing him for. You're going to want to have him as a floater off rotation, and that's exactly what he's used for. He's going to be one of the... He can be a Snapeful unit depending on who you're running. He's going to be one of the units you're going to want to have on your team for support to give buffs to everyone. So he's worth it. I think he's a good unit. Uh, the next one, the last one, is going to be this Bardock. This is the OG Bardock. This is one of the first SSRs in-game. I've had him in the game for a long time. I utilized him back in the day. I remember almost getting to, like, 50,000 with his super attack, and I was almost, I was so excited about that. <laughs> uh, extreme damage to the enemy. Old school extreme damage. With his passive skill, attack plus 25% for all types. Amazing. And his passive skill, all allies attack plus 15%. Back in the day, before we even realized, like, what passives of this were beneficial. Look at his link skills. This is before Prepared for Battle even existed. Saiyan Warrior Ace, Super Saiyan, Family Ties, Team Bardock, Saiyan Prod, all horrible. Well, I'm actually not horrible. They're just like old. <laughs> his Doken though, this Doken Awakening did do him justice. He is the primary prime card you would want from this banner if you already didn't buy the Beginner's Pack. Uh, the Beginner's Pack should be available to be purchased through PLOS Trove. 
Um, if you want to do so, you can go ahead and do that, and you can pick a card. This is the card that I recommend to be the, your primary pick. He is le his leader ability, all types, key plus two, HP, attack, and defense plus 30%, a better leader than his physical variant. He does supreme damage to the enemy and raises attack for six turns. Not that great, I don't like that passive on a super attack, but he's going to be utilized for his passive. Attack plus 30% for all allies when HP is 30% or above. He is one of the best support units on a mono physical or mono strength hero team. And he has Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan. He got prepared for battle because, you know, it's available now. And he has Fierce Battle. So he has a very good link skills. He has a good passive skill. And his super attack will allow him to hit a little bit harder in the future as you play the game. Well, as you play the level. Overall, pretty decent unit. He's going to be the number one best card that you can pull from this. Uh, these three right here, the, the other two, the Super Saiyan Bardock, the Super Saiyan Trunks, and the other, the Strength Super Saiyan Bardock. These are going to be your three primary units, in my opinion. Uh, and then the next is going to be, pro the, well, uh, we're probably going to say the, this Bardock over here is going to be the, be the the second B tier. These three will be your B tiers. And then these three over here, uh, or the four, those four over here are going to be your lowest tier. Uh, yeah, starting from Fasha all the way down will be your lowest, uh, the lowest ones that you can get. Uh, but outside of that, guys, thank you for joining me here today. That's what I believe. That's what I think of the current banner. I don't think you should pull on it until we find out what gotcha is coming out next week. So stay tuned. When we find out if it is Gogeta and Janemba, uh, I would recommend waiting, pulling on that. Honestly, that's all there is to it. The Gogeta banner is probably going to have all the really the good units you're going to want to pull. Same thing with the Janemba banner. Um, outside of that, I mean, I don't think, unless they do Super Saiyan 3 uh, Broly, or if you go into the Gogeta and Janemba banner, and let's say you pull Gogeta on your first multi, that's going to be the only time I'm going to recommend going onto this banner. 15 Dragon Stones for a multi summon is enticing. Hold off, wait, and see what's going to be available in the future. But anyway, guys, again, thank you for joining me here today. Let me know your opinions down in the comments below, and I'll catch you all later.